Welcome friends, I'm Dave Kirkland, pastor of Doolin Church. Before we begin our service for today, take a moment to like the video using the thumbs up icon below. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. This helps us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. It's up to you.
Let's show our love, absolutely. Thank you so much. So Brandon will be expecting that each week. So just send the recordings up here and we'll be glad to play them. So welcome to Church at Duel and I'm Pastor Dave Kirkland. We're glad that you're here. We wanna welcome our in-person as well as those that are live streaming with us for today. It's gonna to be a great service for us. We're uh, transitioning Brandon out to his new job in Roanoke. So we have some, uh, a great ending for us today and also some of the um, uh, music pieces that he's put together like you just saw. Uh, there'll be two more later in the service for today. Today we're going to talk about at the table and think about where you sit at your table at your home around the kitchen table. Are there set spaces where people sit? Uh, what happens when we go to weddings and we see that there are place settings for us? So we're going to, Jesus is put in a similar situation and he's helping determine for us where we should sit uh, in this table of life. So what we'll do is we'll ask persons that are in here, if you'll stand as you're able, let's greet our neighbor. Those of you who are worshiping at home, greet yourselves as well and your family, and then we'll have our mission and vision statement together, all right? We want to welcome all that are here today. It's a great day. So we're going to put up on the screen for us our mission and vision statement, remain standing, and let's try this together. What is our mission? To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And what is our vision? Doolin Church is a caring congregation empowered by the Holy Spirit to bring God's ministry to all people and serve Jesus Christ with love. And you may be seated. We want to take a time now to give thanks to God through our prayers for the needs in the world, our personal lives, our community, our world. There's so much to pray for. So let's do that silently. And then after that, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. All right. So let's go to God in silence. Oh God, hear our prayers as we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we'll have our call and response call to worship. We'll stand as we're able. We've been using the verses of amazing grace, and we're going to use the last verse today. I'll say the words, and then you invite you to repeat after me, all right? When we've been there 10,000 years, when we've been there 10, years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Our hymn is Gather Us In. We'll look together on the screen and sing together.
So we'll have our prayer of confession. We'll pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Merciful God, we find it hard to see in ourselves the trappings our society so admires and serves, power, wealth, and excess that forget mutual love. Forgive us when we are fearful that there is not enough. Remind us that you are enough. Teach us your generosity. Teach us your world-changing humility. Teach us your expansive love. Transform us and heal our lives. Amen.
give a praise. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, choir, instrumentalist, and Brandon, and everyone with that. So it's time for our kids' time. We've got some kids. So come on up with Pastor Dave, and let's see what's been going on with your week. So camera folks, I'm going to scoot down a little bit. If you can catch me here with the kids, that would be great. So come on and just kind of sit around me. That's good. How are you? Come on up. That's good. Okay. Do you want to come sit right here with me? There you go. So let's see. How many started school this week? Did you start school this week? Oh, my gosh. How was it? Was it okay? Was it good? Was it good? So I, when I was your age, I loved going to school. So why do you think I love going to school? Who did I get to see? Uh huh. <laughs> your teacher. And when I went to school, what they did was outside the doors, they would have your names of all the kids, and you'd have to go door to door and find your name. And, you know, I was known as Davy, but my real name is Milton. So I would have to look for Milton Kirkland, and then I have to tell my teacher what? My name is Davy instead of Milton. All right, so we did that. And then so you get to see your teacher. And who else do you get to see? Okay. Friends. Your friends. And sometimes you meet new friends and old friends. Uh-huh. My friends in kindergarten, and I get to bring the first class with me. But one of my friends is only like one extra class. Oh, so the next, that's right. Because what happens is we have your, your class from last year. And then they kind of shuffle you around, and so, but you get to have some new friends. So that's what's important. You have friends from last year, and then you have some new friends, and that's really good. Okay, great. And so then, did you have, do you have backpacks? Do you have backpacks when you go to school? So what do you have? Do you have a backpack? No, not yet. What do you have in your backpack? Um, chalk. What is that? Chalk. Okay, and what else do you have in your backpack? Do you have pencils? What do you have? Oh, karate uniform. Oh, my gosh. That is really cool. Wow. So backpacks, you can put lots of stuff in, right? That's where they're very important. So when I was growing up, we called them a knapsack, uh, a knapsack. But now they're called backpacks. So things have come a long way from when Pastor Dave was in school. But schools are great. And so we want to look forward to that. And we want to thank the teachers. And everyone here in this room has been part of school before. And what we like to do before we have our prayer, let's turn around and can you see the cross up there, the camera? And let's wave to our kids <clears throat> that are worshiping with us today as well. We want to give thanks for them to be here and that they have a good school year as well. All right. So what we'll do is we'll pray and we'll bow our heads, kind of do our heads and our hands. And let's pray after Pastor Dave. Ready? Dear God, Dear God thank, you for this day. thank you for this day. Thank you for school. Thank you for school. For teachers. For friends, for friends and backpacks. And backpacks. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks. You can head back to your seats and thank you for being here today. Let's show our love to the kids for being here. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so friends, I'm going to be leading us today in the prayer of illumination, the gospel, and the sermon. And I'll do my best to remember for us to stand for the gospel. All right? So let's try the prayer of illumination together. Let us pray. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in God's word, I hope. Amen. So let's stand for the gospel reading today, if you're able to. We're going to hear uh, portions of Luke, the 14th chapter, and hear God's word. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath... They were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus also said to the one who invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors 
in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be paid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Think for a moment where we like to be seated at special events. You go to a Nationals baseball game. We want to be in the back, but not too far up at a good angle to see a good view of the game. Go to a concert. We want to be up front, but not too up front that our ears get blown out. And we're willing to pay premium prices for those good seats. Attend church. It used to be churches had pews that were rented. And you would pay a fee every year to rent that particular pew. Pews up near the pulpit area were the highest to rent. You were special if you could be up front near Pastor Dave and the pulpit and the communion table... And in the back were the cheap seats. And it's interesting in churches today, everybody wants the cheap seats, not the premium seats. Selecting seats on an airplane, first class, business class, economy plus, economy. I simply call it steerage. How about being seated at a meal? Where do you like to sit? Interesting being a pastor, a preacher, especially a single preacher, and where I am placed at the table when I am invited. The host probably thinks, hmm, Pastor Dave, where do I put Pastor Dave to be seated? I don't know if you've noticed, but most table seats are in even numbers for couples. Hmm, where do we put Single Pastor Dave. When I visit homes and am invited, many times I'm across from the host, a place of honor. At church events, I'm seated at the head table. At weddings, it's different every time. I have sat with the bridal couple. I have sat with the parents of the bridal couple. I have sat with guests. There was even one time when I arrived to come to find out I had not been invited. (laughs) Should I stay or go? You should have seen the family scramble when they saw me open coming into the room. Yikes! But I really don't care. Face it, I come for the food. And then there are times I notice when there are place cards out at these events, and some people will get there early, find their place card, and decide they don't like where they're seated. And so they go around and they start arranging place cards that fit them to a much better spot. They want to be in a better place of honor at this event. That is what is going on with the scripture today. Jesus is going to a temple leader's house on the Sabbath to have a meal. And it says they are watching him. Notice it says on the Sabbath. Last week we talked about Jesus gets himself in trouble on the Sabbath days. Jesus is with a crowd of Pharisees of good, upstanding religious men, saints of the temple who jostle and elbow their way to the highest place possible so that they might look good in the eyes of everyone there. But they do more than aspire to a seat of honor. They seize it because it is a place of respect, a place of power, a spot where one makes judgments of others. Jesus takes a totally different view of the situation. From Jesus' point of view, 
what we think about others matters less than what God thinks about us. Jesus' advice is pragmatic. You want to be honored? This is how you do it. Go and sit in the lowest place so that the host can say, Pastor Dave, come on up and sit with me up here. Then we will be truly honored by all present at the table. Pity the poor person who takes a seat of honor and must now move to another place at the table, not as prominent. And then Jesus offers this advice to the host. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they invite you in return. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Throughout this parable, what Jesus is saying to us is that God is the host of the table and all are welcome. In our church, God is our host. We have gathered here to worship and praise God. And all, no matter our station in life, are welcome to this church. When I was during seminary time in the late 80s and 90s, one of the popular preachers of the day was Tony Campolo. Tony Campolo was an evangelist, but he had a liberal view of social justice. And Tony Campolo was highly sought after in churches and big places of worship. I knew him when he came to preach at Duke Chapel, and I was the one who picked him up at the airport and then was his host during the day and took him back. And I was able to experience the humbleness of this true man of God. And it was interesting that when he came to preach at Duke Chapel, which has one of these nosebleed pulpits, Tony Campolo came and stood like where I am on the floor, equal with all the participants as he preached that day. My friends, lives were changed as they heard his message of humility, of hope, and of love. Let me tell you a story that he enjoyed telling in his ministry. He tells of an experience of dinner when he was at Port au Prince in Haiti some years ago. He was checking on some mission programs that his organization carried out day in and out in Haiti. And he wanted to see how the workers, his employees were doing spiritually, emotionally, physically during this time. And at the end of a long day, he was tired. And so it was a great relief that he went to have a good dinner at a French restaurant. And he was seated next to a window so he could enjoy the activity of what was taking place outside of that window. The waiter brought him a delicious meal and set it in front of him. And Tony picked up his fork and knife and was about to eat when he happened to look at the window. And there were four kids, their noses pressed flat against the window, staring at his food. Four children living in poverty, living on the street. They pressed their faces and looked at his plate of food. And the waiter, seeing Tony's discomfort, quickly moved in and pulled down the window shade, shutting out the sight of the hungry kids. And the waiter said to Tony, don't let them bother you. Enjoy your meal. Tony Campolo tells this story because he says to us as Christians, don't we find times 
when we are discomforted by needs of the world that rather than respond, what do we do? But we pull down the shade as if they don't even exist. We pull down the shade of people that we'd rather not worry about. We pull down the shade on world problems of hunger and racism and war. We pull down the shade from heartbreak and pain in our lives and that of others. Think about the time in our lives when there's something we don't like to see. We wish it wasn't there. We simply pull down the shade as if it doesn't even exist. Jesus is challenging us to pull up the shade and welcome those persons in our midst that we just have problems with. Pull up the shade to see the hunger and the hurt of the world. Let us at Doolin Church pull up the shade and see the hurt that is all around us, the pain people suffer. And let us find ways that we can reach out and serve and help. That's the good news, friends. Think about those places in our lives when we pull down the shades. And let's think about ways that together as a community of faith, we can pull up those shades and let people know that all are welcome. And my friends, that is the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say together, Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to sing our hymn, In Christ There Is No East or West. We'll stand as we're able. Let's do that now. of the service we want to give thanks for everyone being here today it's time for our offering so persons that are here in person you'll see the offering plate uh, as you go out the door and then for those that are live streaming you'll see the qr code we ask you to give to that generously as we want to support the ministry of doolin church so that we can raise the shade and welcome all to know what happens here at doolin what we'll do now is i'll offer the uh, blessing benediction doxology and then we're going to celebrate uh, brandon for a bit So we ask God to bless each and every one of us as we go forth in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let us all go forth in peace as we sing now together the words of the doxology.
So we want to thank everyone for worshiping with us today. Just so you'll know that starting September 1, we'll be with a new protocol. We'll be getting out this week on the website. So if you'll take a look at that and you'll see the ways that we um, will be worshiping in new and optional ways. So that will be uh, starting next Sunday. All right. So let's be seated as we can. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this portion of the service to to offer thanks and love to Brandon. I've got my list and Brandon, I hope I get it all in the right order. So Brandon, come on up here with me with Pastor Dave. And uh, there are three sections of our honoring you today. All right. All right. There he is. He's hiding. So. Brandon, come and stand right here. I think they can get us both right here. It'd be great. Okay. So it's good to see you, Brandon. So let me see. The first thing I have for you is some stuff here. So I went shopping down at Fox's. You know Fox's? Yes. <laughs> so I got Brandon um, a music bag that you can use with school and everything. And plus, you can put your items that you get today in the bag. All right? Okay. So you get to hold the bag Thank as you. I give you things. All right? Okay. So let's see what we have. I have my list. Here's my list. All righty, so let's see. There's so much in here, Brandon. Let's see. The first is Brandon plays, what instrument does he play a lot? He plays the saxophone. So let me see, Brandon. So, Brandon, I got you a little music pen of a saxophone. Aww. So he says, oh, Thank isn't that you. nice? So you can wear that. And then I got you, let's see. Oh, okay, I went down there and they said, this is really cool. I guess you can use it. It's called a saxophone strap awesome awesome Thank you. and so it says on this it says i got it for this reason the revolutionary soft sack strap reduces stress and strain to your shoulders and neck oh, so good. you enjoy okay. that together all right so cool. you've got Thank that you. then the next thing i've got oh i got you a new instrument that you can learn to play it's one of these circus whistles it goes oh. up and down so uh, at your churches and that, you can play them songs on that, all right? There you go, all right? I learned to play Amazing Grace on one. I bought me one, too. Really? Okay. It was so, I said, I got to have me one, too. It was really cool. I'm going to play it next week for you for kids' time. Let's see. Brandon, I got you two pencils that have choir on it with notes oh, and hearts. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh, this is funny. I got you a pair of suspenders. It says adult suspenders, and they're music notes in all different colors. So uh, you don't have yeah. to try it on now, but okay. you can try it on later. I'll send you a picture. Okay. Oh, I got you some socks. <laughs> I got you a pair of socks, music notes, and a saxophone on it. Uh, so you enjoy those at home, all right? Thank you. And then the last thing I have for you from Pastor Dave and the church is I got you a conducting baton. Thank you. So that's really cool. So you enjoy all that stuff and put it in your bag. Let's show our love to Brandon, all right? All right, part two. Kathy, why don't you come on up here with me? Kathy made you a quilt. And I haven't seen this yet. So Kathy, why don't you help me un... You tell me what to do. All right, here it is. Let's see. It says, presented to Brandon Mock on August 28th, 2022, with special thanks to him for being our outstanding minister of music from your friends at Dooley United Methodist Church, made by Kathy Eckbreath. So let's see what it looks like when we, when we, you tell me what to do, Kathy. What do I need to do? And if we want people to look this way, right? Perfect. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> and Kathy, let's show, let's show the back. The, I think the back's pretty cool too. It's multidimensional. So, it's, <laughs> so that's great. So let's show our love to Kathy and Brandon. Absolutely. And then our last is our... Uh, Oh, that's right. So she's got you all set. All right. So we'll, we'll deal with that later. All right. Then the last is we're going to have Chapman and he's going to come up and give you a presentation. And Chapman, here's the mic for you. If we can get the mic on for Chapman and Chapman kind of do your presentation and come sit, stand near the, um, the square there. That's so everyone will see you. Great. I'm tempted to negotiate here because there are four of you up on the first, you know, slide. So if you could just leave one of you with us, okay. but 
Uh, this is a gift on behalf of the entire congregation for just those countless hours, that incredible effort, and just the joy of you being with us. So on behalf of the entire congregation, here's a check for $4,000. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So Brandon has a home in uh, Roanoke, so that will help furnish your house. Yes. And a lot of Thank other you. things. Whatever you want to do, it's for you to use. Okay. But Brandon, you know, I, we've worked together for two and a half years. It's been a true joy um, to work with Brandon. We have um, worked at hymns, our worship together. All that, you know, Frederick Beekner, I've talked about him a lot. He died last week at 96. And one of my favorite books is a theological ABC and uh, he has one about handkerchiefs. And he says that God drops handkerchiefs in our lives. And God dropped Brandon here at a time when we needed him most. At a time when we needed him most, God dropped a handkerchief in the life of Doolin Church. And I think about um, all the recording stuff. I mean, hours and hours and hours and helping us get our uh, live stream going and everything. And now we, we send him forward to other places where he can do the same and we carry on. And I said, Brandon, can we call you when we need you? <laughs> and he said, yes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, have a prayer for Brandon and then uh, the music is gonna play and then feel free to come and greet Brandon, all right? So what I thought we would do is let's stand as we're able and kind of put our arms out or whatever kind of toward here and I'll do this here and we're going to pray for Brandon all right so let's do that gracious and loving God we give thanks for the ministry of Brandon Mock and what he did for us here that uh, you dropped him here when we needed him most and now we send him forward into the world we ask that you be with him as he teaches kids teenagers about the importance of music as they sing together we ask you to be with him as he continues his music ministry in churches, as he shares his many gifts with others. We ask you to bless him as he goes on his way. For this we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we all say together, Amen. Amen. So we'll do, I think we're going to have some music to play. And as the music is playing, Brandon, just kind of hang right here okay. and greet your, greet your loved ones. All right, come on and stand down here. It'll be great. And, uh, as, and just come on forward and uh, greet him and be great, all right? So come on forward as you wish. 